Hello YouTube, Jay here and welcome back to the Glove Room. Uh, sorry it's been a while but I'm happy to be doing a video for you today and today's video, you guessed it, is going to be about wood baseball bats and I love talking about bats just as much as I love talking about gloves so uh, let's get started shall we? Um, today's video is going to be mostly about a, uh, a, the wood bat types that you're going to encounter every day, ash, maple, and birch. And it's going to be a little bit of a primer so all I want to go over are the pros and cons of each. Uh, maybe a sentence or two on the history of some of these bats and also some of the physical characteristics of them. Uh, so let's talk, start talking about ash. Um, ash is, uh, is a great bat if you're just starting out uh, using wood. Um, it's soft, it's got a, a great sweet spot, uh, it's very flexible, and it's uh, forgiving off the end. So, you know, if you roll over one too many curveballs, it's not going to break like a maple bat would. And because it's a little bit softer, uh, it creates that, um, that good solid trampoline effect uh, when you make excellent contact. And you, know, you have good feel uh, for an ash bat. It feels very comfortable in your hands. Uh, very few people would disagree with that. Um, I like ash. I started off using ash uh, a long time ago, probably about six or seven years ago. Uh, probably a little bit more than that, actually. And uh, ultimately, the problem was that they would break. So. You know, when uh, you're getting sawed off the down the middle and, you know, um, those inside fastballs just kind of kind of ruin your day, well, they also ruin your bat too. And, uh, man, it got expensive in the first couple of years. So I went to a maple composite, and, uh, and now I only swing maple. So anyway, more on the uh, physical properties uh, of the bat. You know, durability is ultimately a factor when you're talking about ash. And like I said, if you're, you know, you're getting sawed off, and um, you're getting jammed, uh, those bats have a tendency uh, to rupture. And um, really, the durability factor is, is an issue when you're, you're taking that, that bat into the cage. So um, I actually recommend, here's, a, here's an ash bat right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, these, take these batting gloves off. That was a nice, nice gimmick a couple minutes ago, but now I immediately regret that decision. So uh, let's talk a little bit about these right here. These, uh, annual rings right here. Can you see the grains? I don't know if you can in the light. Um, and then there's the uh, tangential face uh, right there. Oh, there it is right here. This is the tangential face of, uh, of the bat. And these right here, this is the, uh, the grain side, the radial face. So what you need to know about that is this. If you continue to hit on the tangential side, ultimately it's going to get, it's going to be weakened. And um, the physical properties of it make it flake, so that's called annual ring separation. So what I recommend, if you're going to take an ash bat to the cage and it's not going to be your gamer, tape it up real well and uh, you know make sure that it's going to be nice and tight around the barrel. And that way, if you're not hitting every time off of the grain side, um, it's not going to do a whole lot of damage to your bat. So again, uh, overall, my recommendation on ash is you know go ahead and use it in the games. Uh, they're they're great bats. Um, it's good wood. Um, the the pros definitely outweigh the cons in my opinion, and uh, I like ash. But again, durability is a factor, so make sure you get some good ones. Um, let's talk about uh, maple. Here's maple right here. My Warstick 271 maple. Um, maple is on the other end of the spectrum, right? So it it doesn't have any whip to it. It has very little flexibility. Um, what that means though, it's a very dense wood, it's a very hard wood, it's a heavier wood uh, than ash. But, you know, studies have shown that if uh, the same uh, bat velocity, swing speed, and uh, location of hit, I mean, the ball could go up to 10%, 10 to 15% further by using uh, maple over ash. Um, I like maple for its hardness, you know, it definitely has a reduced sweet spot uh, compared to ash. and. Uh, you know, because of that, you definitely got to hit it on the screws uh, in order to get the ball out there. But man, it sounds great. You know, and half the game is psychological anyway. When you make si solid contact with a maple bat, gosh, it, it feels it feels great. It feels fantastic. Um, but again, like I said, it doesn't uh, whip a whole lot. It's very durable uh, in the handle, so probably uh, less of a tendency than ash uh, to break if you get jammed. Uh, but they do have a tendency to, to break when you say take that curveball uh, off the end of the bat. Uh, they do have a tendency to break there. So, you know, overall, in terms of surface hardness and density and uh, and strength, uh, Maple's got it, got your hands down, and that's the best bat for you if uh, if if that's what you're looking for. Um, let's talk about one more, and uh, this one's kind of a new 
a new uh, a newcomer to the, to the scene here. This is birch, and I know you can't really see uh, the type of um, grains there. Not not really a great shot of the grains, and they're more difficult to see, and that's the reason why there's an ink dot test, and we can get into that stuff in the, the 2008 study on, on bats. We can talk about that later if you'd like. Um, but birch, like I said, is a newcomer on the scene, and it actually uh, incorporates some of the best qualities of ash in terms of uh, flexibility and some of the best qualities of maple in terms of hardness and it's in the middle of um, both of those in terms of sur surface hardness and wood density um, as well as uh, that flexibility that ash has so you know um, Carlos Gonzalez is swinging yellow birch now and this is actually uh, yellow birch as well and uh, so if you're not too many people are using it right now and I think that it's going to catch on and I think actually you're going to see a reduction in, uh, in ash bat usage and they, they will probably be going um, both those players over to, over to Birch or making the full on uh, conversion to Maple. Um, the majority of players in the major leagues now are using Maple and I don't blame them. I mean, you know, if you've got explosive swing speed and the ball's going to go further if you're using Maple, yeah, I, that's probably what I would be using too if I have outstanding hand-eye coordination and physical ability. But I have neither one of those things and that's why I'm doing a video talking about bats instead of swinging one, uh, you know, at the home game at Camden Yards tonight. So anyway, that's just a little bit uh, about the bats themselves, some of their physical properties. I mean, maple and birch are both what are called diffuse porous woods. So uh, the cell structure is a little bit uh, different than um, a ring porous wood like ash. You're not gonna see annual rings uh, the same way that you would in a uh, diffuse porous wood. You're mostly gonna see them um, pretty much be uh, equally spaced apart. And uh, the reason why there's an ink dot test is so uh, like this, is so you can see what's called slope of grain, which is a, a measurement that determines the uh, straightness uh, along the tangential and the radial face of a bat. So that was incorporated in 2008, uh, 2009, I'm sorry, the study was done by the U.S. Forestry Service in 2008 in conjunction with Major League Baseball. And one of the major benefits there was um, they shifted the labels 90 degrees because they figured out that in diffuse porous woods, the strongest face is actually the tangential face, so not the radial face the way it had always been for ash for over a hundred and some odd years. So they made uh, baseball bat suppliers um, shift the labels over 90 degrees. Another thing is this ink dot to determine the slope of grain. Um, again, slope of grain is what's going to, you know, it's a measurement of, of straightness of, of wood. And uh, the problem is in 2008, 2,232 bats broke between July and September of 2008. And of those, 756 were in multiple pieces. And the downside of that is that maple was three times more likely than ash uh, to break into multiple pieces and four times as likely to break um, because of a slope of grain failure. And what that means is that your wood is slanted. There's a deviation in that wood. It's low quality and inadequate at the professional level. And the changes were made in 2009, and there's been a reduction in breakage and, uh, thankfully, a reduction in inju of injuries. And, uh, you know, back in the early 2000s, they were really talking about, you know, banning this bat. That it was going to do a lot of damage to fans, to pitchers, to infielders, and especially the pitchers. And, you know, it became a, a weapon and a projectile. So you know, I'm really glad that they got it figured out. And hooray science, right? Score one for, the, for all the science cats out there. So good for you guys at the U.S. Forest Service. I'm really proud of you. Um, Anyway, so that's just a little bit about some of the, the basic physical properties of, uh, of ash, maple, and birch. I know that that was running through it pretty quick, but the rest of it is, you know, it's, it, it's kind of boring. Uh, side note, though, even though Carlos Gonzalez is using that, uh, that uh, birch bat, and he had previously used Marucci and sand bat, I think, um, what's cool about maple bats, though, is that everybody knows why maple bats got popular, right, because of Sam Holman of sand bat. He was uh, giving bats to a guy named Barry Bonds, who slugged more than a couple homers in 2001. But did you know that Joe Carter for the Toronto Blue Jays uh, illegally used a maple bat back in 1997? And a guy before that in 1996 was using one too. So, you know, it's been around for a little while. And uh, once it finally blew up, I think the maple bats are here to stay. So uh, I'm going to do a follow-on video on the uh, bats that I use. But uh, before I sign off, I'd like to say a big thank you out there to uh, Warstick Baseball. Um, baseballism for this great double play t-shirt and my uh, my good friend Craig Brooks who uh, sent me a t-shirt of uh, my Instagram handle at pickle the beast 417 uh, on a t-shirt and um, I, it's a dream that I never thought would ever come true but uh, I, I didn't even it's a dream I didn't know I had uh, so thank you so much Craig uh, I love all you guys so 
Again, give me a follow on Instagram at PickleTheBeast417, or if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or email me at thejetstolehome at gmail.com. So hope you guys have a great weekend, and uh, yeah, stay grassy.